Cooler Master's new Master Set MS120 sets you up with a gaming keyboard and mouse for just $89.99. The keyboard features MEM mechanical switches, rubber dome hybrids with a clicky mechanical feel, per-key RGB backlighting, and 9 preset LED modes. The mouse has durable Omron switches, a 3500 DPI PixArt optical sensor, and matching RGB lighting. Click the link in the description for more information. Do you hate those bulky USB 3 motherboard adapter cables that your case came with? Do you have one of those fancy new motherboards that actually has the new USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector on it? Is your case starting to seem a little bit out of date now that it doesn't have that type of plug on it? Well then you've come to the right place because in today's video I'm going to share a little bit more about this new product or somewhat new product from Lian Lee. It's a little adapter cable everyone just can't stop talking about. That's right. The, the name on everyone's lips is the Lian Lee PWIC01NH45. It's a USB 3.1 Type-C adapter cable for USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second connection. And you can add it to your case. Maybe. So if you happen to purchase this uh, product, and uh, I will put a link to it in the description down below, so check that out. Uh, it pretty much comes with the cable, which is 45 centimeters long, 450 millimeters. That's where the 45 and the name comes from. I believe they have uh, other links of this available as well. Comes with a couple screws that will screw into the metal bracket that is pre-attached to the actual Type C side of the cable. And then you get a set of instructions because this is actually meant to be an upgrade kit for a Lian Lee case, uh, which will work with the PC011 series. Um, so if you have that case, then you're in luck. This is going to be super easy. There's already a Type C port on it, and all you got to do is remove the panel and follow these simple instructions to basically screw it in there, and everything's already set up for you. Use the included screws to mount it. You're good to go. But what if you don't have a Lian Lee case because? You don't have a lot of money and they're expensive or you're allergic to aluminum or, or when people say aluminum instead of aluminium or that kind of thing. What do you do then? Uh, then you might have to sort of hack something together, which is I'm gonna, what I'm going to be doing today. I don't want to call this a tutorial. I am going to be attempting to uh, add one of these ports to my Define R5. Uh, and I've already started sort of scoping out things and how it's going to work right there. Um, but if you don't have this case, then I, what I would actually recommend you do is try to get a piece of metal or something like that that you can actually mount behind, say, a plastic, a flat plastic piece in your case so you can screw through that. Uh, I recommend about an eighth inch bit for that. You can just screw right through that metal, right through the case, and then you can pretty much use those included screws uh, to mount there, and then you're just gonna have to do what I'm gonna be doing, which is to sort of mill out your own oval space for the USB Type-C plug on there. But anyway, uh, if you don't have a piece of metal, or if you're like me and you just wanna do things crazy, um, maybe, well, here's what I've decided to do. I'm gonna do the wedge it up in the corner method, which is like the only place I've discovered that is up here on the IO in the Define R5, because I just removed this piece right here that's for the audio and the, and the uh, switch for the fan controller. But I'm gonna try to wedge this up here. So because of that, I think there's actually gonna be enough support to keep it in place, even without going through metal. Um, but I'll come back to that when I, when I get to the, uh, hopefully me, me actually getting this to work method. But so if you're going to do that, of course, you're going to want a screwdriver, I'm sorry, a drill, uh, if you want to make things clean. If you're going through metal, I'd recommend a bit that is specifically made for drilling through metal, which I have uh, my, my metal bits, I put some blue um, tape on to distinguish them. I'm also going to be using some X-Acto work, uh, at least for the plastic, to cut that away a little bit at a time and try to do it carefully. I have a kit for that, so I have some nice sharp blades in there. And then I, I included a file here, not because I'm going to use this file, because it's not small enough, but if you happen to have mini files or a mini file set, then you should probably go ahead and use that. That's going to be your best bet. I don't have that, so I'm just going to kind of make do and we're going to see what happens. Now taking a closer look at the cable itself, uh, the actual Type-C plug side, we can see the metal Type-C plug. It's a very nice and sturdy one. Note that it protrudes a little bit beyond where the metal mounting bracket would actually go, so if you are using that, bear that in mind. Uh, but that does give a little space if you want it to stick through, say, a millimeter or two of plastic in order to be exposed on the outside of your case. Uh, the bracket is attached with two screws, and I'm going to be removing that and actually possibly shaving off 
little bit of the side here so I can sort of wedge it into that space that I have on, on my case. On the other side we have the actual magical uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 motherboard connector and this was the one that uh, was developed by some motherboard manufacturers and some case manufacturers. I believe Asus was the one who started this, but we're seeing it on other motherboards too. Now if you look close at it, it's actually not symmetrical. I thought that it was flippable, kind of like the uh, USB-C type, uh, the Type-C connector side is. However, that is not the case. There is one little corner of it that's a little bit fatter, uh, so it does need to be positioned in one specific way. Now bear in mind that this is a, an L-angled, or like a 90 degree angled connector then the way it comes out of the plug, which might mean you need to sort of take that into consideration when it comes to your motherboard. So here's the Asus Strix X299-E Gaming, for example, and on this motherboard, the plug is positioned right here and in this orientation, and so if I'm gonna plug it in, it's actually gonna line up correctly and be going away from the rest of the motherboard in the direction I would kind of want it to go. Uh, however, I have seen other implementations, like for instance, this is the Gaming M7, the MSI X299 Gaming M7 to be more specific. And this one also has that same connector on it. However, this one's positioned vertically. Um, and like I said, I originally thought it was, it was flippable and I was like, oh, then that'd be fine. You can kind of choose which way you want it to go. But uh, in this case, it's gonna end up going north. Uh, so it might potentially like, probably not, but it might conflict with that USB 3.0 connector right there. But, I mean, we hate that one now anyway, so, so who really cares about that? But something to bear in mind, and I have seen uh, just vertical versions of these two rather than uh, just the 90 degree angled ones. So uh, maybe, maybe look out for one of those if your motherboard orientation is a little bit more challenging. So here's uh, my front panel, and these are all the front panel connectors. This would be at the top of the case, um, and I'm actually going to be attempting to add the USB-C plug right there. So it won't exactly be symmetrical with everything else on top, but it, it will be off here by itself, and it's in a position where I have access to this actual part of the case. Now, I'm basically going to drill through this side once I figure out where I want it to be. Uh, a small drill hole and then I will widen it slowly until hopefully I can get it to fit in there. Internally here, there's actually not a whole lot going on, but there is one of the posts here and that's one of the, this is actually engages with the case when this entire front panel goes back onto the case. So vertically, uh, it's actually going to be kind of wedged down against that. So that's why I'm pretty confident that I can set this up and I don't necessarily need to go through metal. I already measured this inside here when I removed this other front panel piece here, but this is too tall to fit right there and still not conflict with the case when it goes back in. So I'm basically going to use my little Dremel or my cutting tool to cut the bottom half of this off so it can sink down in there deeper. And then uh, I probably can't trim too much this side, so I might actually need to go in here as well and possibly trim off a little bit of the side of this post that this uh, screw goes into and that will be delicate because that's <laughs> I don't I don't want to mess up that post but I think if I do things right I can get it I can get it to go down in there and it should be pretty snug and then I'll probably just end up securing it with uh, with with hot with a hot glue gun um, and yeah well, let's see how this goes
All right, I think I have, I think I got it. Um, this took a lot of kind of finesse and finagling, but uh, this is this is kind of what it's looking like right now. I've, I've only just gotten it to actually poke through the, the USB-C connector from the inside right there. Popped into the little hole, and basically, after lining it up at first, making a little mark, uh, poked it through with the drill. I was using a 3 seconds inch bit, in case you're wondering, and sorry, that's imperial, not metric. Uh, and then beyond that, I just I, I drilled about three, three holes, started to widen it by either using the drill bit in there and just sort of spinning it and, and uh, widening it uh, further up and down. I was using the uh, sharper little exacto knife bit in here to kind of trim around the edges, try to make sure things were straight, as, as straight as I could along uh, this line right here. And then I was also, of course, using the Dremel pretty significantly. Uh, not the Dremel, this is a Black & Decker. It's, it's a rotary tool, I guess, is what I should use, should be saying. Because the uh, trimming down of this piece here was kind of the most vital. And let me see if I can, oh, actually that pops out. Not without too much difficulty right there. So this is what this ended up being. And yes, it's, it's a hack job, but it was the different areas that I needed to trim down to kind of make sure that it would wedge in there properly. And eventually everything everything worked and it actually fits in there really snugly. Uh, actually, what I meant to do was actually test it a second ago, but let me pop it back in. Okay, so it does, it definitely takes some finagling uh, to get it in there, but once I get it lined up, I can push it up so where it's almost flush with the edge that I cut out right there. And overall looks fairly clean. You know, it's not, it's, a, it's, it's it's almost completely level as far as I can tell. Uh, and the, of course, actual litmus test is taking a USB Type-C plug, plugging it in. There we go. Ta-da. Unplug. Plug back in. Yay. All right, uh, now the last thing is that this little nub sticking out right here is almost flush, but I think that's actually gonna help because that'll push up against the case once I put this back on. So uh, let's put this back on and see how it looks with everything actually attached to the case. And here's the completed project. This, by the way, is, is my custom modded already uh, Define R5, uh, which is gonna has been used in, in Arctic Panther and is going to be used in the uh, refresh of that, which I'm working on next. All the water cooling parts are scattered around all over there. But there is what it looks like, finished project product. So there's your front I.O. And I know, again, we lose a little bit of the symmetry, but uh, check it out. Just just dominating the Define S with not only USB 2 and 3.0, but also the USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, right there with the Type-C connector. Uh, I, I mean, it'd be fun to add one there too, but I guess there's not enough connectors on the motherboard. But yeah, I think that looks pretty clean. I think that turned out pretty nice, actually nicer than I was expecting. I mean, there's a, a few scuff marks around there, but... Uh, Overall, I got the size right, I believe, and I, I it's like so snug in there that I don't think I even need uh, like any glue or anything. I think I can just leave it as is. All the other pieces in there are just kind of holding it, so it should be good for plenty of plugs and unplugs without losing durability, or hopefully. But anyway, though, guys, that is going to be all for this video. This has been a quick little uh, demo mod instructional slash just see what happens video with the Leon Lee PWIC01 and H45. The, the builder's choice for adding USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C connectors to your case if you have that connector on your motherboard. Thanks again for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. We'll be back very soon with more. We'll see you next time.